Do you ever wonder how Nimrod became a mighty one in the earth? Wonder no further, we're going to take a look at that in this video. All right, here you have Genesis chapter 10, verses 6 to 20. And here you have the descendants of Ham. Ham was one of the three sons of Noah that helped repopulate the earth after the flood. This Ham gave birth to four sons. Cush, Mizraim, also known as Egypt, Put, and Canaan. And it says here that this Cush, firstborn son of Ham, was the one that gave birth to Nimrod. And it also says that Nimrod had a kingdom. And the beginning of his kingdom was called Babel or Babel. All right, and it was located in the land of Shinar. All right, there's not a lot of information on Nimrod, so what I'm going to do now is turn to the book of Jasher mentioned in Second Samuel and the book of Joshua to extract more information on this Nimrod. Because most people think that he was a righteous hunter before the Creator because they read this verse and misinterpret it. And I'm going to show you that that's not the case. He was a wicked tyrant, oppressor, reprobate to a certain extent. All right? There's not a lot of info on Nimrod in the Old Testament. And he's not even mentioned in the New Testament, so let's see who this descendant of Ham was. All right, here you have Jasher chapter 7. As you can see, you have Noah, his sons, and their lineages. Same thing we just seen in Genesis chapter 10. All right? And if you zero in on verse 10 of this chapter of the book of Jasher, you'll see that the descendants of Ham are mentioned. Cush, Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. Four sons. All right? Now, it was out of Cush that Nimrod sprang from. All right? So, here in verse 23, it says that Cush was a son of Ham, the firstborn son of Ham, and Ham was a son of Noah. But this Cush took a wife in his days. He was old. He was up there in age, and this woman that he took to wife bare his son, and they called the child Nimrod, saying, At that time the sons of men again began to rebel and transgress against Yah. Mm -hmm. And the child grew up, and his father loved him exceedingly, for he was the son of his old age. Kind of like Abraham and Isaac. Abraham gave birth to Isaac at a very old age. But anyways. Verse 24 says that the garments of skin which Yah made for Adam and his wife, when they went out of the garden, were given to Cush. Why were they given to Cush? Verse 25. It says that for after the death of Adam and his wife, the garments were given to Enoch, the son of Yared. And when Enoch was taken up to Yah, he gave them to his son Methuselah. Verse 26 it says that after the death of Methuselah, Noah took the garments and brought them into the ark, and they were with him until he went out of the ark. Verse 27. Here it says that after they went out of the ark, Noah, his wife, his three sons, and their wives, it says here that Ham stole those garments. He stole those garments from Noah, his father, and he took them and hid them from his brothers. So he hid the garments from Shem and Japheth. Verse 28. It says that when Ham begat his firstborn son, Cush, he gave him those garments in secret. Hmm. 
secret societies? I mean, the Hamites were the first cult group after the flood. And Nimrod was the first tyrant after the flood. So, just something to think about. All right, so they they were with Cush many days, these garments. Verse 29 says that, And Cush also concealed these garments from his sons, and not only his sons, but his brothers also. What brothers? Mizraim, Put, and Canaan. And when Cush had begotten Nimrod, he gave him those garments through his love for him, and Nimrod grew up. And when he was 20 years old, he put those garments on. Alright, verse 30. So, when Nimrod became strong, it was through these garments that he put on. And Yah gave him might and strength. He was a mighty hunter in the earth. Yeah, he was a mighty hunter in the field. And he hunted animals. He built altars. I guess idol worship. Those type of altars mentioned in the Bible. Yahshua was commanded to destroy altars. Those built to foreign gods, deities, pagan deities. So this Nimrod offered up animals before the Lord. Which Lord? I have to ask myself, which Lord and which God gave him might and strength? I don't think it was the Most High, and I'm going to show you why. Okay, so anyways, this Nimrod strengthened himself through those garments. And he was able to subdue his enemies round about. All right. Verse 32 says again that the Lord delivered all the enemies of his brethren in his hands. And Yah prospered him. Or it doesn't say Yah, it says God prospered him from time to time in his battles. And he reigned upon earth. And I'm going to show you why I don't think this is Yah, the Most High Judge, who prospered him. Nor this Lord being mentioned here. Again, these are names for Satan, Lord, and God. Okay? So don't get it twisted. Because later on, it's going to say that he never walked in the ways of the Most High. So why would he bless him and help him? It makes no sense. Why would he help this wicked man that was more than likely building altars, sacrificing animals to foreign deities? Why would he help him oppress the children of Shem and Japheth? All right, anyways. Yeah, it says here. When Nimrod was 40 years old, war broke out between the children of Ham and the children of Japheth. Okay. Verse 36 says that he told the people of Ham, don't fear, don't be alarmed. Our enemies will be delivered into our hands. And you may do with them as you please. Tyranny, oppression. Again, they were the first slave masters after the flood, the Hamites. As it says here, verse 38. It says here that the Hamites took some of the children of those they've held captive as security. In other words, they became slaves to Nimrod and his family. Verse 39 says that when Nimrod had joyfully returned from battle after having conquered his enemies, all his brethren, together with those who knew him before, assembled to make him king over them. And they placed a regal crown upon his head. Alright, so that's how he became King Nimrod. Alright, so let's see what else can I share from this chapter of Jasher. Verse 
It says here in verse 42 that when he was reigning according to his heart's desire, having conquered all his enemies round about, he decided to build the city of Babel. And he did so. Okay, so... Verse 44, Nimrod dwelt in the land of Shinar. He reigned securely and he fought with his enemies and he subdued them and he prospered in all his battles. His kingdom became very great. Verse 45, it says that all the nations and tongues heard of his fame and they gathered themselves to him. And they bowed down to the earth, and they brought him offerings, and he became their lord and king. And they all dwelt with him in the city at Shinar. And Nimrod reigned in the earth over all the sons of Noah, and they were all under his power and counsel. Wow. So he pretty much subdued everybody in the earth at that time. And for those thinking that it was... God, yeah, that prospered him. I have to disagree. I don't believe that was a creator that helped him. And here's why. Because it says in verse 46 that when all the earth was of one tongue, as it says in Genesis 11, 1, all the world spoke one language. But Nimrod, it says here that he did not go in the ways of the highest. See that? So why would he prosper him? It says here that he was more wicked than all the men that were before him from the days of the flood until those days. That's how horrible this man was. So one can't help but wonder which God or Lord is prospering him. Because there's two. The one above and the one that's ruling for now. So you really got to be careful when you read Lord and God. Because those are names for Satan, for those that don't know. So don't get it twisted. All right, that's my belief that when you read cer certain words with Lord and God, doesn't always mean that it was the Creator, yeah. But those are just my thoughts and opinions. Because it wouldn't make any sense for him to bless this wicked man if he's walking contrary to him. Bless him so he could oppress the children of Shem and Japheth. Who were more righteous than the children of Ham. Not even Japheth who are considered Gentiles, his children, were as wicked as these Hamites. So, not only that, but in verse 47 it says that Nimrod... He made gods of wood and stone. He was an idolater. He bowed down to them. He rebelled against the highest and taught all his subjects and people of the earth his wicked ways. And Mardon, his son, was more wicked than him, as it says in verse 47. Yeah, so why would the Most High bless him? That's not the Creator who's helping him get all this power. That's Satan, man. Those rags weren't even supposed to go to Ham or Cush or Nimrod. More than likely, they were going to go to Shem because Scripture says that Yahuwah would dwell in the tents of Shem. So the first rebels after the flood were the Hamites. They were the first slave owners. The first tyrant after the flood came from Ham. So, I mean, come on. But yeah, these people like to act like this never happened, right? I mean, it's in the record books, so. Verse 48. All right, we're going to close up. Verse 48. And everyone heard of the acts of Mardon, the son of Nimrod, and would say concerning him, From the wicked go forth wickedness. In other words, like father, like son. Therefore it became a proverb in the whole earth, saying, From the wicked go forth wickedness.
You know that famous saying, like father, like son? Well, that's where it came from back in the day. And it was current in the words of men from that time to this. Still with us to this day, the old saying, like father, like son. Anyways, verse 49, <clears throat> it says that Terah, the son of Nahor, prince of Nimrod's host. See, even Terah, who was a descendant of Shem, was serving Nimrod. Who's Terah? Terah is the father of Abraham, as it says here in verse 50. All right, so I'm going to leave it to use to do the reading for the rest of this chapter. That's all I wanted to share is show you how this Nimrod came to power and how wicked he was and how some think that he was serving the highest Yahuwah. No, I do not believe that was the case, but you draw your own conclusions because it says that he was more wicked than anyone on earth. And why would he bless somebody that rose to power through ill-gotten gains? All right. So, yeah. Verses. Okay, right here. Verses 28. Come on, damn it. Don't give me a hard time. Verses 28, 29, and 30 let you know how Nimrod rose to strength. Book of Jasher. Read it for yourselves. I recommend it. It's a very neat piece of work. And it's going to fill in a lot of the gaps in Genesis and the rest of the scriptures. All right, so that's all I got for this video. I hope it was informative. And yeah, I just wanted to shed some light on Nimrod. He was not a righteous hunter and he did not serve the Most High. He was an idolater building altars. Sacrificing animals and probably even men to foreign deities. And this God who gave him might and straight more than likely was Satan, Lord. Those are his names. Lord means Baal. God is short for God. That was Satan's name. So, yeah, don't get it twisted. There's a war going on here, good versus evil. And the overseer of the righteous is not the overseer of the wicked. All right, because the creator gets blamed for a lot of stuff, you know. He may have allowed Nimrod to rise to power, but that doesn't mean he approved of what he was doing. All right, so yeah, that's all I got for this video. I hope it was informative. And until next time, shalom.